Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Adila Sukmameni Syaharwanto from Institute Technology of Bandung. I am here to present you guys my dissertation under the title Business Feasibility Analysis for Local Beauty Brand in Surabaya. For abstract, Diva Derma Soft Skin is a local beauty brand in Surabaya that has adopted to evolving market dynamics by leveraging social media platforms, influencer marketings, and flexible distribution channels. The company emphasizes market research and strategic marketing technology, achieving a competitive edge through discount pricing while adhering to safety and quality standards with PPOM certification and production permits. Trend play a crucial role in boosting revenue and e-commerce sales. With the company experiencing a revenue decline in 2022, but showing a positive growth in 2023, this indicating the effectiveness of their strategic initiative. E-commerce sales have risen, reflecting company's increasing focus on its online presence and commitment to customer service. Their marketing approach includes using social media platforms like Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube to gather consumer insight and engage with their target audience, while influencer collaboration help build new audience through relevant content and authentic engagement. The company also expands its distribution channels through resellers, agents, and distributors. Environmentally, Diva Derma Soft Skin is adopting sustainable approaches such as glass packaging and incentivizing customers to return empty bottles for recycling. And they also plan to certify upcoming products with Halal MUI certification starting in October 2024. Overall, their strategic approach in marketing, distribution, and sustainability positioned the company for continued growth and success in Indonesia competitive beauty industry. Here are the overview of my presentation. Firstly, let's dive to introduction. The beauty industry in Indonesia is rapidly growing due to the high demand for cosmetics and personal care products. This trend is driven by cultural influences like the Korean wave and beauty standards set by the media. With a balanced gender distribution and a significant portion of the population in their predictive years, especially in the metropolitan areas like Surabaya, Indonesia offers a promising market for cosmetic producers. Local brands are particularly favored with 15% increase in popularity across various socioeconomic groups and frequent pattern, consumption patterns with 67% purchased monthly indicates cosmetics are seen as an essential products. This market growth has attracted many new products seeking regulatory approval, making Indonesia a key player in the global cosmetic market. The main research question in this dissertation is how is the business feasibility analysis for local beauty brand in Surabaya with four supporting research questions. First, how is the business feasibility analysis for local beauty brand in Surabaya from the legal aspect? Second, how is the business feasibility analysis for local beauty brand in Surabaya from the financial aspect? Third, how is the business feasibility analysis from for local beauty brand in Surabaya from the marketing aspect? And fourth, how is the business feasibility analysis for local beauty brand in Surabaya from the technical aspect. This research aims to provide guidance for future investors and entrepreneurs in Indonesia's beauty industry. It focuses on conducting a thorough feasibility analysis for local beauty brands in Surabaya to address the existing gaps. This study will examine internal and external factors affecting market entry and sustainable growth trends for regional beauty brands. It will identify potential challenges and risks along with the strategies to overcome them. Ultimately, this research aimed to offer practical insights and recommendations to help local beauty firms successfully start and expand in this dynamic market. For this research, I use qualitative method as the approaching method. And for collecting the data, 
Collecting the primary data, I conduct a structured and semi-structured interview with the key stakeholders of Diva Dermasovskin. And to collect the secondary data, I'm collecting it from the market reports and internal company records to provide a robust basis for analysis. To analyze the data, I use descriptive and comparing analysis. The descriptive analysis is by providing a detailed summary of the Diva Dermasoft skin strategies, process, and performance within the market. And for the comparing analysis, I examining the Diva Dermasoft skin market position against other local beauty brands operating in Surabaya. Answering the first supporting research question from the legal aspect is running a beauty business in Indonesia involves following legal rules and getting necessary permits. Laws like law number 17 of 2014, law number 17 of 2023, and law number 8 of 1999 covers commercial health and consumer protection. The National Agency of Drugs and Food Control, PPOM, ensures product safety through certification that builds consumer trust. Under her law number 36 of 2009, Cosmetics need a distribution permit to meet government standards. With Indonesia mostly Muslims population, halal certification is increasingly important. And Diva Dermasoft Skin meets PPOM requirements and holds production and distribution permits. But they're working towards the halal certification for all products by October 2024 staying legal and competitive in Indonesia's beauty market. Hi, my name is Adila Sukmamini Sarwanto from Institute Technology Bandung, Bandung, and I'm here to present to you guys my dissertation under the title Business Feasibility Chart Analysis for Global Brand in Surabaya. The chart illustrating the net sales revenue reveals significant growth from 3.5 trillion in 2021 to 4.5 trillion in 2022 and 4.5 trillion in 2023. In 2023. Before reaching its peak at 6.1 trillion in 2023. These patterns indicate effective market expansions and sustained demand, even though the growth slowed in 2023. This declaration may hint at market saturation or heightened competition. The line chart representing the cost of goods sold shows a sharp increase in 2022 to 1.9 trillion from 100. 17 million in 2021, but a slight decline to 1.9 trillion in 2023. The sharp rise indicates challenges in the inventory management or production efficiency, possibly due to increased market demand. The reduction in 2023, despite steady revenue growth, suggests improved cost control and production efficiency. Furthermore, the administrative expenses remain stable, while sales expenses doubled from 2021 to 2022 and then stabilized in 2023, reflecting investment in sales and marketing. In addition, interest expenses remain consistent at 260 million rupiah annually, indicating a stable financial strategy with controlled leverage. Overall, CV3 Berlian Surabaya shows effective market expansion and financial management focusing on efficiency and cost control amidst challenges in revenue growth. Expenses doubled from 6 million in 2021 to 12 million in 2022, maintaining this level in 2023, reflecting intensified marketing efforts and expansion strategies. As I said, the administration expenses remain stable at 612 million, indicating efficient cost management practices, as well as the interest expenses shows cost intensity at 260 million annually over the three years, highlighting controlled financial liabilities. Overall, CVT Gaberlian Surabaya demonstrate robust financial health through effective cost control, ensuring profitability amidst challenges in inventory management and market expansion. Total revenue peaked at approximately 6.1 trillion in 2021, dropped to around 3.5 trillion in 2022, and rebound to 6 trillion in 2023, indicating strong recovery and effective strategies. 
e-commerce sales steadily increased from 199 billion rupiah in 2021 to 492 billion rupiah in 2023, underscoring their growing importance and Diva Dermasovskin's successful adaptation to digital commerce. For understanding product potential and devising effective strategies, Diva Dermasovskin distributes products nationwide in Indonesia through a distributor network that extend beyond Java, ensuring board market reach. Influencer marketing plays a pivotal role in enhancing brand awareness and customer engagement across mega, macro, and also micro influencers, as evidenced by its growing online followers. Active participation in exhibition in Surabaya or whether in Jakarta further amplifies brand presence, especially in key markets, contributing to positive sales trends. The company, 2020's rebrand focus on digital platforms such as TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and also YouTube, marking a strategic shift from a traditional marketing methods to a digital marketing methods. Future plans include updating packaging to a sophisticated gray-white design to appeal universally, whether to male or female, and expanding product availability across multiple e-commerce platforms. As for the technological aspect, Brenna Diva, as the owner of Diva Derma Soft Skin, outlines their strategy for developing and marketing cosmetic products while ensuring compliance with trade, health, and consumer protection laws. Diva prioritizes obtaining BPOM and halal certifications, aiming for full halal certification by October 2024. In response to the market trends, Diva is preparing to launch a new retinol-based skin booster, conducting targeted research on raw materials. Marketing efforts center on authentic influencer collaboration across Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Product launches are meticulously planned in partnership with nationwide distributors, time with e-commerce events, and featuring special promotion. Diva enhances appeal with innovative packaging and efficient supply chain management tailored to their target demographic of 25 to 35 years old. With a dedicated technical team ensuring product quality, Diva Derma Soft Skin demonstrate agility in navigating market trends and enhancing their competitive age in Indonesia's cosmetic industry. In conclusion, this business feasibility analysis reveals that local beauty brands like Diva Derma Soft Skin possess considerable growth potential in Surabaya or any other Indonesian metropolitan areas. Despite facing regulatory and competitive challenges, these brands are feasible investment because they can adaptly adapt to the market trends, align with the regulatory framework, and maintain strategic digital sales channels. Their ability to leverage customer feedback and market research results in innovative product development and resilient e-commerce growth. Diva's strong recovery after financial setbacks illustrates that local brands can thrive by aligning their strategies with evolving market dynamics and consumer preference. Here are some recommendations. First, longitudinal analysis of market trends and regulatory impact. Conducting a longitudinal analysis will provide insights into long-term growth potential and strategic directions for local beauty brands in Surabaya. This will also clarify the impacts of regulatory changes on the industry. Second, a comprehensive competitor analysis. A thorough competitor analysis comparing local and international brands will identify competitive advantages that local beauty companies can leverage for sustainable growth. Understanding these dynamics is crucial for strategic decision making. Third, market strategies and consumer behavior studies. Future research could explore specific market strategies and delve into customer behavior to enhance understanding. This includes studying consumer motivation and preference to better tailor products to meet customer needs. That, ladies and gentlemen, was what I would like to share with you. Thank you.